Hello and welcome once again to The Blueprint. It is Canada's Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmale, Member of Parliament for Halliburton, Quartha Lakes, Brock. Thank you once again for joining us. You are the hardcore. You are sticking with us. You want to hear that conservative message, but we need your help as well. We need you to like, comment, subscribe, share to this program. Help us push back against the ever-moving liberal agenda. As always, if you can't listen or watch us right now on Facebook, you can download us later on and listen to us at your convenience on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, it is out there. And again, we have a great show, new content every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We do not rest. We have a member of parliament from Quebec, uh, I think the first time on this show, believe it or not, Pierre Paul Hoos, who we also call as PPH for short. He's the member of parliament for Charbourg, Haute St. Charles, and the Shadow Minister for Public Services and Procurement. We thank you very much for your time. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks to Jamie for having me with you today. Now, of course, the big talk right now is the vaccines and and how Canada has been, or specifically Justin Trudeau and his cabinet has been stumbling upon the rollout of the vaccines. Not only that, securing the proper amount of vaccines. We just have note that Canada has vaccinated less than 3% of its population. Many countries are way ahead of us. Uh, we're looking at this article here from The Economist who says that virtually all of Europe will be vaccinated by the end of this year. And it's saying Canada can hope for mid-2022. We just heard 200,000 job losses last month. Our economy is hurting. The anchors of it in uh, natural resources has been shut down by this government. And and now we have another kick to the 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 the, the uh, way to get back on track is to get us vaccinated. We've also, we'll talk about the disaster, which has been rapid testing, which we've been calling for for quite some time. So what what do you think, PPH, what do you think the 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 announcement that they they can't seem to get the uh, required amount of vaccines into Canada, what, what's that going to do for, for our country? Mm. Oh, thanks for the question, Jamie. So, you know, if you want to reopen the economy, we need to be vaccinated. Whatever you want it or not, it's the, the only way to, to, to change things and to get back to a normal life. So, uh, and the problem is with this government, Justin Trudeau, he didn't uh, manage the file uh, properly. So it's a, it's a shame, actually. We, uh, we need vaccine. We need it as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, they prefer to start the, the last year, you know, when we st- begin the pandemic. And, and, and before con- before continuing, so I think people listening today, they understand that English is just my first language. And I'm from Quebec. I'm not a separatist. I'm a conservative member of parliament, but I'm not used to speak English. But So thank you for having me. And uh, uh, I hope people will understand. So uh, to continue, you know, last year, uh, Jimmy, uh, Justin Trudeau preferred to, to start negotiating with Chinese uh, government. They have a deal with Cancino and th- that deal broke and then uh, it's why we're late and it's why we're behind the fight actually now according to the government documents we're expected to get some some vaccinations or vaccines in the coming weeks so what does that mean what what are we talking about in terms of getting it to the provinces and territories for the actual needle in arm part of it but, so the problem is we uh, the canada negotiated the contracts on a quarterly basis instead of monthly or weekly. So uh, it's why actually when uh, Justin Trudeau uh, said, oh, we will receive six million doses, that's fine. But we don't know if how many in January, February, March. So actually maybe we will receive six million doses till the end of March, but how can the provinces um, manage the situation? They don't have any vaccine now, they wait, but they don't know how many doses, when? So this is a problem. And if we compare with other countries, I have the contracts of AstraZeneca with the UA, and uh, in that place, they negotiated monthly basis. So it's easier to, to, to plan for the provinces especially. And it's why there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of problem with the contract, how many doses, and especially when. That's a good you know. question. That's a good point you make because the the deals that the government are making are confidential, and the government minister has refused to actually publish those documents um, widely. And it's estimated about four point six billion 
dollars in contracts with these manufacturers have been been put forward. Now, when when we're talking about a, a, the vaccination rollout, the government keeps saying by the end of September, every Canadian who wants a vaccine will get the vaccine. Is that realistic at this point? <clears throat> actually, actually, we we uh, we don't think so because we need from now to receive two million doses each single week till September. And for now, we just received 1.1 million doses. And then we don't know exactly how many we'll receive next week and the next month. So if we don't receive it, 2 million doses a week from now, it, won't, it will be uh, impossible to be vaccine uh, till the end of September, like uh, Trudeau uh, tried to say. And, um, and it's, a, it's a huge problem, you know, Jimmy, because without vaccine, it's impossible to think to reopen the economy and so it will be it will become uh, more uh, we we'll say i think struggle struggle uh, situation for canadians so uh, as we mentioned we talked about the the 200,000 unfortunate job losses during the month of january for this country and i think that's hurting a lot of people most of the job losses have been in ontario and quebec ontario where i'm from quebec where you are from they're seeing that that hardest hit so we, we learned uh, a few weeks ago when we had uh, Stephanie Cusey on, the, the shadow minister for transport, when the government decided they're going to change the rules regarding travel. We, of course, have called right almost at the beginning of the pandemic for stricter controls at the border, rapid testing at the border, more emphasis being put on those coming back and forth. Now, this gets put on people at the last minute. Many people are struggling to figure out what is going on, the rules, very inconsistent. So maybe you can compare to us, I guess, the government's response then and now to the pandemic. Oh, good question. You know, last year, one year ago, and I mean, I'll say uh, January 30, I was uh, at that time the public safety shadow minister, and I've been to the health committee to ask some questions to the officials and to minister. And my question, my first question was, why you don't close the border? At that moment, he said, oh, no, this is not, a, that, that virus is not so bad. Uh, everything's fine. I said, okay, but, but we, we saw the other countries, they are closing border. And here in Canada, at that moment, we don't have any single case. And they, they didn't want to, to, to do some, anything. So, okay, so a few, few, after, uh, few weeks after and a few months, we're still asking to close the border. And they decide to close the border in March. But I keep asking questions and I said, okay, you said you close the border, but you don't have any tests. You don't have any personnel from Health Canada at the airport. We don't understand. And we asked questions to the uh, Canadian Borders uh, CBSA agent. So the, the guy said, we just give information to the passengers coming in Canada, but we don't have any other control. So it's been a shame, you know, for months, the, the Canadian government didn't do anything really strong at the border. And the first, and you know, the border is the, their first defense uh, uh, against COVID nineteen, and we we missed it. Okay, speaking of the border, and this is something we called for early on. Is the focus because we didn't at the time have a cure, vaccine, or treatment for the COVID uh, virus? We had called for the implementation in a very real and meaningful way of rapid testing, whether at the border or within the community in general, because if you are able to identify those that have COVID, you can take them out of circulation into isolation and therefore, without a cure vaccine or treatment, allow people to to kind of get the economy, get back back on track and and moving again. And, And again, we've had tests that were approved very quickly by the European Union, many of which identify that as the gold standard. The United States has approved way more rapid testing companies, but yet Canada has fallen behind in that category as well. Maybe you can unwrap that for us. Yes, and you know, Jamie, at each single step of the, the pandemic, Canada was always been always been behind. You know, the, the US, UK, it, the European Union always been front of the parade. 
So uh, we don't know why. And we ask for, we push a lot on, on the government to, to have the rapid test, rapid test uh, as soon as they've been uh, uh, authorized in the U.S. I asked a question. I said, okay, if the U.S. authorized that test, why are Canadian agency cannot uh, look for the, uh, you know, the, the, the checklist and then, okay, to ap- approve it as soon as possible. So th- this government always been so slow on this situation. And, you know, like for us as a member of parliament, actually, we cannot go in Ottawa. We cannot be on the House of Commons, do our job, asking questions. They want us, uh, you know, spare everywhere in Canada in front of a computer. And why don't have a rapid testing for member of parliament as an example and as well for businesses. So with rapid testing, we know we're clear. Go do your job. It's the same for the and then I don't know everything been late and we don't understand how this government work. What do you have to say about the, the government who it's announced, I guess, a week or so ago that they're going to purchase almost two million of the vaccine doses from COVAX, which is a global vaccination program sponsored by the World Health Organization, basically taking these vaccines that are meant for the, the poorer countries, if you will, mm. and taking those doses and bringing them to Canada to make up for the failures on behalf of of this liberal government that, again, as you mentioned off the top, put all of their eggs in the Cancino basket? Yeah, good question, Jamie. At, uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago, when uh, we knew about that, uh, that the fact that the government will pick some vaccine from COVAX, uh, yes, we paid for. Yes, I understand that the government of Canada paid $440 million in COVAX, but it's for the Pure countries uh, third, uh, uh, from Africa mostly and North uh, South America. And then because Trudeau start negotiated with the Cancino at the beginning, the deal broke, then been late to negotiate with uh, Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca. It's why we're ne- we don't have our vaccines for now. And it's a shame to, to put his hand on the, the I would say, the, the the, the, the jar and I put, took some vaccine from COVAX because at the end of the day, yes, Canada want to be, we want to be vaccinated as soon as possible, but also the poor country, if they still have the, the, the virus, uh, the virus will stay alive. So we need to vaccine all <laughs> the entire world, but uh, it's not uh, the way to, I, think, I, I mean, it looks cheap. It, it, I, I think it's a good word. It's cheap from Canada to put some money to help these countries and then took vaccine on the button. Well, I think it's even worse too that, and we're seeing a screenshot of it now, uh, what the what the Liberal government's been doing, but in terms of total percentage of population uh, vaccinated, I think we're somewhere around the, with Myanmar, which is undergoing a coup right now, uh, and they're doing a better job at obtaining <laughs> uh, vaccines and getting them in the arms of people, which I think is 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 totally frustrating to to those who have lost a job or actually want to get back to their lives and just be normal again. Oh yes, actually, uh, from today, I think we are 36th position in the world. Uh, we are on the G7 countries. We're not the last one. Japan is the last one, but Japan don't have any. They don't have the virus in Japan, so it's why they just start to vaccinate their people. They're, they don't have the same pressure, you know. Uh, so it's uh, we don't we can't compare with Japan. But if we don't have Japan, we are the last one from the G7 country countries. And uh, also in the world, the smaller country do better than than us. We are we are actually very in a bad position in Canada because we deal. We have some deals with uh, Pfizer in Europe instead of uh, some, having some deal with Pfizer in the U.S. You know, the, in the U.S., Pfizer have a, a plant in Michigan. It's 250 kilometers from Canadian border. But we can't have, I mean, we can't have some doses from Pfizer in the U.S. Why? <laughs> we don't understand. So we have to deal with 27 countries in, the, in Europe. They, they all want the, 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 the Pfizer dose in first. So uh, again, it's a it's a mess. And but you know, as conservative, we we're complaining against Rudeau. Yes, but we don't just we're not just complaining. We proposed last year a lot of solution for our government to help Canadians because at the end of the day, what we all want is to be vaccinated and to restart the economy. 
it's why we're pushing on that government. It's the, the only thing actually we can do is to push, 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 propose solution. But Justin Trudeau don't want to listen to the opposition party. Now, PPH, you're, you're a former member of the Canadian Armed Forces, I believe, uh, if memory serves, a lieutenant colonel, if, I, if I'm not, not mistaken. So thank you for your service. Um, I think that's why uh, on, on the positive side, we see that in Ontario, uh, the, the military, which is very good at actually uh, implementing and, and kind of figuring out complex situations and, and letting it go and actually planning for worst case scenarios. Uh, that's why they've been brought in. And in, 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 I say in this case and many others to, to actually implement the vaccine distribution. But the problem is we don't have any vaccines. Exactly. You know, you, you don't have the ammunition to fight. So without ammunition, you stay, you sit on your, on your chair and you wait and is the, this is a huge problem, a huge problem. And it's why, uh, I don't know, our Justin to the work. I don't know if he calls, uh, he took the phone, uh, take the phone, call the, 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 the chair of uh, the, each companies. I don't know are his relation with the uh, Euro- European countries. But all that we want is to have some solutions and as soon as possible, I'll, I'll say right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you've been on the show on the French version of the Blueprint with Gerard Tatel a few times. Your first time, I believe, on the uh, the English version. You've done an amazing job. We thank you very much. But I always give our guests the final word. So is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off here? Oh, I just want to say, so thank you for your patience with my English. But as you know, I'm a proud Canadian like you. I speak French first, but I'm, I'm glad to, to be here with you today as a proud Canadian. And, and there are proud lots conservative. of <laughs> Absolutely. There are lots of conservatives in the great province of Quebec. Yeah. And we appreciate all the work you're doing, PPH, on, on the vaccine front as your previous role as Shadow Minister for Public Safety and Security. You're doing a great job. And thank you for your service to our country in the Canadian Armed Forces. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Okay. Pierre Paul Hoos, the Member of Parliament for Charbourg. Ote St. Charles and the Shadow Minister for Public Services and Procurement. We really appreciate his time talking about what Canada is doing wrong and what we should do better in terms of securing doses of the vaccine. As mentioned off the top, new content every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Please join us, but also if there's a friend, a neighbor, or someone you might know that's in your social network, please like, comment, subscribe, share to this program. Help us push back against the ever-moving liberal agenda. If you can't watch it all now on Facebook, you can download it and listen to it later on at your convenience on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, it is out there. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again next Tuesday, again, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Remember, low taxes, less government, more freedom. That's the Blueprint. Thanks for joining us. 